Hello there guys, welcome back to the e-bike repairs YouTube channel. Um, my name's Dash and I take apart and fix very fun and exciting things. Today I've got in this, this is an LVBU uh, e-bike battery pack and it doesn't work. So it's not being recognised by the, um, there's an app to connect to it, it's sort of a smart jobby that goes onto the bike and connects to it and stuff, it's all very exciting. Uh, so the charger, weirdly, it's a USB-C end, uh, so it's a 36 volt battery pack, so 42 volts out. And it does a little bit of something when you uh, when you connect it, like it tries, but it makes a little clicky, sparky sound and just not a lot happens. These lights come on on the outside, but you can't make them come on when the charger's not plugged in. And if you press that button there, the light comes on. But the second you unplug it, all the lights go out and of course nothing works. Now, I can't figure out how to open it. That's the current problem I'm having. Uh, so I've got the top off, I squeeze the top in a vice and I've managed to get it loose. So that part there is loose to the rest of the body. But I've tried pulling on it and there's definitely something that feels like cables stopping it coming any further. Uh, I could just see inside, I could see a little coil and stuff, but there's you know, something is attaching it, probably a, a short cable to a charge port or something like that. I don't really want to just wrench on it. Um, on the bottom, I've taken off this little cover plate thing here, which went like that, but that's sort of locking it or something. And then two screws out of the panel connector here. And that's as far as I've got, and I thought, you know what, I'll film in case anything exciting and explodey happens. Then at least I can be laughed at on the internet forever. So the panel connector has no interest in coming out. I think the problem I'm going to have with this battery is just about everything in it is silicon shut. Which I do understand. I was hoping getting the panel connector out and at least having a bit of a, a gander inside it might have done me some good. but. Uh, it's just bending, so there's no joy there. Now, the only movement I've got so far is this lid. And I don't know if it's silicon stopping it or what. It's something is stopping it. I don't really want to rip a load of wires off. Oh no, look, it's just a massive blob of silicon. Ah, oh, fantastic. There you go, it turns out just keep pulling. That's the answer. So I did, I had to get this part in the vise and then twist and squeeze this glue loose see what kind of glue used to be on there. I'm not sure what it was, but something. Ah, oh, look, we've got innards. Very silicony innards. Uh, let me move these screws out. I'm gonna lose them otherwise, aren't I? Expect ourselves a nice tray for parts. Parts tray, very good. Hopefully then, to disconnect something from somewhere. God, that's a lot of silicon. What an other, this is not made to be repairable, is it? It's crazy. Uh, let's try getting some little pliers to get some of these wires free. Don't know how good your view's gonna be. I'm trying to have a bit of an attempt at the moment to uh, Loosen anything off if I can. There's no room to get work or get to anything currently. I'm just very held down. Stuck inside this massive silicon they put on there. There's one wire free ish. You know, a little free. So I think this is purely the battery pack, and the controller for the bike lives in the lower side. Uh, of you know the mount where this goes, and I think these are just our discharge pins here. I suspect these ones aren't used. The uh, lower pins here, or oh, inner pins, sorry, the small ones. There's just so much silicon in here, though. Sort of makes it a little impossible to get to anything at all. But we'll try slowly but surely, peeling away at it. Let's see what I can get to. Get 
These are probably the wires that go down to the uh, switch for the... Oh, we found a connector. There you go, nice. It's an XT30 there that probably goes to the output down here. I suspect the others go to the light switch. So that would be... Because this cable obviously dives down towards the bottom of the battery. I suspect the other two that run down the side... Yeah, they've got another connector on there. I can see it. It's the scooter charge port connector. Standard little red thing. There we go. And there's our slack there in it. So there's that. And that should be the connector that takes us down, probably, hopefully, to the... Uh, to the switch. Oh no, look, I think that's the charge connector. Because look, we've got C minus on the board up here. Interesting. We'll get to this in a second when I can uh, hopefully show you it all. That's more stuff silicon on. Oh, let's switch here. Let's get that loose. There we go. Starting to see things now. What a ridiculously silicon thing. Um, so this must be the charge port. Oh yeah, look, from there. That's the standard charge port connector. So I think these cables just run round and probably rejoin the pack here and here. So they're probably just stuck in all the silicon. Never going to get them out without snapping them, am I? Um, and then we've got... Well, I'll see if I can show you now. Go for a close-up. How's that? We've got LED... LED, TX, RX, HAL, ground, 3 volt. Not sure what they're for, but obviously it's to control. It's got all smart functionality, this thing. So I think there's a Bluetoothy type module up here. That uh, lets everything work. Well, not work. Perhaps. I don't really know. Let's see what else we've got in here. Big pull, big pull, there we go. Right, okay. All these are just coated, obviously. I don't know if they go down or if they go inside the battery pack. Pull a lump of that out. You know, I think that they go down the side. Yeah, I think they do. So the small pins on that connector at the bottom must be used because we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then we've one, two, three, four, five, only five pins down here, so, ah, but if two of them are for that, five and two, that makes sense. <coughs> okay, starting to get there, and we're going to have, oh, look, there. Now our charge connectors that go inside the pack. So I think that actually the battery pack itself is okay. It's just normal. It's brilliant. These go inside the battery. They go inside the battery. So I'm going to have to loosen off this connector here. Lots of gentle wiggling is the answer to these. There's one. And that goes to MS underscore SW. So switch of some variety. And then we've got this big connector here, which is all those ones that pass through to the bottom. Take the whole header off the board. I keep doing that. Probably is. Get a little pick on there and just. Okay, I only removed the part I want. I think it's a JST plug on this. There we go, freedom! Okay, that's the upper module. These are LEDs 
that you see light up around the outside. Right, uh, meter in DC voltage. See what we've got an output from the battery pack then, shall we? There's our pause and our neg. One volt on the output. That's not enough volts. It could be that the switch is in the off position, which I think is this wire here. But I'm not sure. I'll uh, do a bit of investigating on that part. And then I wonder if the battery pack actually fits out through this gap, or you have to take off this metal ring here. Very hard to say. I'm going to have to try and cut this silicon out and uh, have a look. What should we use? A pick? Is that the right thing? To just slowly try and get through it? I don't know. Probably not. Whatever I use will be the wrong thing, though, won't it? to do is not put this through the side of the battery pack, of course. Really hard to know how big the actual pack is if it stops here or, uh, or where it actually stops. Of course. Can I then grab any of this mess and remove it? What a huge pain in the bum. Wow, there's no chance of that, is there? Maybe for this side, I should try a different pick. Sure, I'm stabbing the top of the battery there. Just not having x ray vision. It's a little hard to know. Okay, any movement at all? I'll grab the entire bundle. <sighs> not really. How am I supposed to get that? I wonder if I should see if this comes off. It doesn't look like it does, but. Is that plastic or metal? So just give it a little scratch to see. Casing itself is metal, so I don't think that comes off. I'd imagine it probably doesn't. I guess the only solution is keep picking away at this. If it blows up, it blows up. Oh, yeah, that must be a bit of something important, because that's a blue wire that's probably from inside the battery bank. I've managed to get there. don't think I should have that on the outside of the battery bank. I suspect. Probably not. I'm not supposed to have got that. Curious to know how anyone else would have done this. meet the people that make these batteries and just ask them what's wrong with them. Mm. 
right. <clears throat> I think it's time to persuade it a little. There you go, there's a bit of movement there. Now with it being essentially a big metal thermos flask type thing, I've got no idea how I'm supposed to actually get this battery out of here. Um, because of course it's not going to want to come out, the silicon will be stopping it. I don't, uh, don't think any amount of pulling on these wires is going to go well. And of course I can't get to the bottom here to whack it out, which is what I want to do. That must come off that's a plastic end cap. I'm going to have a go at wiggling this off I think. Maybe if I reattach the screws to this. I'll grab it there. I don't really want to shatter the whole thing if I can avoid it. But Oh no, look, there's movement. That does not really want to come undone, does it? Definitely all glued shut in there. Hmm. If I got this connector out, I could really wiggle it. I think all that's moving is the outer shielding, not the actual whole connector. Don't know how people are meant to be expected to do this. Um, the charger must be making contact because it's sort of sparking like it was. But I could measure the charge port and see. Yeah, two volts at the charge point. It's probably low low voltage situation where it's been left to sit for ages and that's what's uh, that's what's done it. I wonder if I could get away with connecting the charge port up so I, I can't open this. Connecting the charger up which would then there you go activate oomph mode and then Give it a little extra power via that. Uh, is that the right one? There you go, that's the right one. So if I did something naughty like this, and got my adjustable power supply, and. Oh, where's that gone? Missing bits of cable. There we go. Let's get this turned on. And voltage at zero. Let's pop one lead on there. And one lead on there. Let's see what my power supply is measuring. Not a lot. Oh, yeah, look, four volts. So we could see if this charger, the original charger, will kick in at any point. Oh, there you go. It started, it just needs to take it up to 10 volts. And now I think the original charger is going to do something. If we leave it long enough, it should be bumping the voltage up without me putting any in through my meter. This is all through the charge port. If it's going to do anything, of course. If I can get my probe in here as well as that. Okay. Yeah, original charge is just starting to flash green now. My meter's at 10.35 volts. Now, will the charger start charging it? Obviously, this is far too low, but we are post BMS, so. And nothing at that. See, the voltage isn't rising. 
all from my power supply now. 16 volts, 17, 19, 20 volts. Now the charger's trying to do something. live reading there. If you can see that. Are you even in frame? You're in frame. Charger's green. Not going to go red at any point, Mr. Charger. thought at about 28 volts it would start to charge, but we could have some dead cells. Let's turn that back down. Let's see. Uh, charge port, of course, is USB-C, it's not normal, is it? Straight off. A bit strange, but sure. Oh, it's glowing red. Just. Probably really hard to tell, but there is, in fact, a red light showing on the charger. That is not a green light. Now, if I unplug my setup here, please, this just under the plug. Would it stay red? Yep, it will stay red. Okay, so let's get all that undone so nothing shorts out over there. Okay, turn that power supply off. Put one probe in there and one probe in there and see if it looks a bit like we've got a working battery pack. Well, a, a slightly charging, very dead battery pack. Should I say? Not a lot being shown on the output of that, but probably because it's a bit low. The charger is red, and the LEDs around it are flashing, indicating it is beginning to uh, charge by the looks of it. I'm assuming that's a charging thing. Ah, of course, there won't be anything on the output because I've got the switch hooked up. Went. That way, I believe. Just like that. And the switch takes a super teeny tiny little thing to activate it. I can get this off this. Someone's tied it on with a bow. Uh, no. with me. Right, this little stabby thing is to the on off switch. It's possible it's in the off position. That would be the off position. And that would be the on position. Yes, yeah, so it was in the on. Okay. My meter's been on for so long it's decided it wants to start turning itself off. So, maybe it doesn't accept, maybe it doesn't put out power when it's charging. Oh yeah, look, we've got one unhappy red light now. But no output. And the red light's, oh no, it's flashing. Probably indicating, oh no, is it flashing? Probably telling us it's got a very low battery and it's unhappy, it is flashing. Or it's gone off. Probably it now, it's probably gone off. Uh, the 
light won't work yet because it'll be running off this fine connector just here Ooh, off goes the light there goes the light working Right, turn that off, the light stays on indicating there is some battery power but probably not a lot so who knows I shall leave it for a little bit monitor the temperatures and things and see if it starts to get warm because if it does obviously you know it's not the kind of battery we can really count on and uh, and see but that might have revived it you never know because obviously we don't, we don't know what voltage that was at and there's no chance I'm going to get this pack out of here without really damaging something inside the case so I could do a bit of looking and some testing and seeing okay right we're back at it got a few more um, developments with it so that's all interesting so the top came off that was fine the Bluetooth module is not in here uh, the Bluetooth module is in the base unit of the bike so that's what this comms port wiring is for this goes from whatever's at the top of the battery pack that bit that sits on the top it goes down and out and it connects via this JSD connector through all these pins into the rest of the bike just there now the bottom does come off and um, it's so glued on it was a nightmare um, and in it being so glued on all this was all very attached horrifically attached um, the insulation on the wire got stripped so that I need replacing the insulation on the positive got stripped so that I need replacing it's not a problem right now because obviously it's not plugged in this is uh, separate um, it's just there's just so much silicon it's an absolute nightmare if someone asked me to repair one of these again I would say no um, and then the biggest problem is the board where it was all glued on has cracked as you can probably see there it was so glued on that as I was pulling this off that you know there's resistance and resistance and it comes out you know half an inch what's that well over a centimeter um, before you can even see what's happening inside we've also got a little hall sensor down in there on three legs off the back of this part that seems to detect when it's on the bike and that's what this part here is for um, so yeah I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to repair this damaged board or not but I'll have to have a go at it because otherwise I'm <laughs> not going to uh, not going to be doing that am I so um, oops I say oops you know it's not my fault it's just the way that things happen um, I suspect though that these ports no longer connect and that uh, the board is the board is damaged. So if I put the meter to continuity mode and I check across some of these pins, we'll find out. So the power positive probably is that side. That's connected. The negative is still connected because that's all on this side of the board. And the crack runs along here, which is probably what all the communication wires are for. So we'll start with the end pin. How many pins have we got? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pins. One, two, three, four, five of these, and two of the pins probably go to the power switch here. So, if I go for this one, that seem to connect. Aha, there's one. They both seem to connect to that, but maybe that's because the button's pushed in, who knows. Oh, half the button is missing, it's over here. Let's try undoing said button, and we'll see again. that there. So that's the very end pin there is the plus, the, the red. So that's the black one there. So, 
that's what these two end pins do here. Put a bit of that silicon off at the very end. <coughs> and then all the remainders must go over here. So got a uh, coating across all this that might need to come off. Before I can get proper readings on it. really want to come off, does it? I mean, that's the whole point of that stuff, but... Right, hopefully that's exposed enough shiny bits. Let's continue. So we're starting from the third one in. Don't seem to have a connection. Don't seem to have a connection. I don't seem to have a connection on any, any of them. It could be those components on the other side that make it not a straight continuity check. But um, who knows. So I'll have to figure out a way of removing this board from the housing. I'm assuming that this outer comes off. But we were all wiggling that when I was trying to get the thing apart. The rest of the connector hopefully pushes in. Oh, there goes something. Ah, no, see the connector wants to go the other way, so it's probably soldered on once it's in there, which is, I'm sure you can imagine, far from ideal. For my uh, needing to fix the traces on this board. Might have killed it. Oh, it's definitely quite snapped. What a shame. I mean, it's fixable. I wonder if I desoldered all these components, I could sort it. And then resoldered the uh, the connector on there. I think it's possible. Ideally, I'd like to fix this for the customer because you know they, they didn't break this part. Obviously, the cells is their fault, but uh, this broken board isn't. And as no real current flows through this part, I suspect it's quite doable. What I'm going to have to do is pick off all this uh, coating around here and desolder everything. And uh, I'd imagine there's room on the back. I should be able to just run some uh, jumper wires across the broken part of the board there. And uh, it should work again, I believe. Because I'll be able to find the traces and uh, solder some little wires on. So I'm going to probably stop recording <coughs> and I'll cut back when I have results. Not necessarily, not necessarily show you the entire boring process. Well, unfortunately, that was the end of that. Uh, the board finished snapping. There's too many layers. The rest of it looks like that, and I can't fix it. Um, it's a bit of a shame because ultimately uh, these connectors and this only have to get correctly hooked up to that uh, connector, but sadly the connector did not survive. 
um, it's all quite melted and destroyed so that's sadly a no repair attempt on that one. I did manage to get the battery back out so we can at least have a bit of a gander at that. So silicon sealant was the undoing of this entire pack in the end. Um, I did manage to get to take a bit of a charge but it was um, oh, ruined basically. It's the uh, long and short of that. The um, cells got hot. So I did get it on enough that it would actually begin turning on and uh, put power to the bike. So the cells hadn't gone full short circuit but they had died. Which is still obviously not really very useful when what you do. What you desire is a working battery pack. It smells a bit funny, but it doesn't smell like leaky cells. They're just, you know, they were over discharged and nothing really going to bring them back. Now, if this disaster hadn't occurred, I do believe that this would have been quite resellable. Um, it uses a teeny tiny little BMS with one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven balance wires, so that's good. Um, fairly simple construction. We've got DBK cells in here, whatever they think they are. Probably sorry, two and a half amp hour cells to make a five amp hour battery back up, something like that. Um, or maybe three amp hour to make up a six, who knows. And there should be 30 cells in here. The construction looks um, um, fine. Not really anything horribly wrong with it. It's, you know, it's functional, which is sort of the uh, what matters, you know. And, uh, well, we tried. We tried. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this kind of thing and you like seeing, you know, sometimes even fail videos, it doesn't always work. Um, please feel free to leave a like on the video, share the video, comment, um, you can subscribe to the channel or if you really, really, really like it, you can become a channel member where you pay um, 99 US dollar cents a month and I get shockingly small quantity of that, but it does inspire me to keep making these videos uh, for people who are interested. Maybe this helps someone out and that they don't open the battery the same way. Um, not that there's really another way, I don't know what else you could have done, to be honest, because by the time the case had come out you couldn't see it, but here we are. Um, next time, bye bye.